I'm Marlena Sparza and you're watching The Crystal Heart Show. It's the road to the 2012 London Olympics with the opening ceremony being Friday, July 27. As a part of the kickoff, we're here in New York City where Times Square has been transformed into a festive Olympic village, shining a spotlight on the inspiring stories of the athletes that make up Team USA. Um, I started boxing when I was, I actually wanted to start when I was way younger, but my dad was against it. That's, you know, it's a male sport. Sure. And um, my, he wanted my brothers to box. Mm -hmm. So I kind of weaseled my way in there and was like, well, I'll, ta I'll go with my brothers. I'll take care of them. And um, I kind of just snuck in and I stayed yeah. in it and he couldn't say no anymore. <laughs> nice, nice. It, it just takes that little shove, you know? And, yeah. And you know, they, they probably, he probably saw the passion behind it too, you know, that you yeah. really wanted to do it. I think it helped that I would win everything. Because <laughs> I think if I would have started losing, he would have been like, no, 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 oh, no, don't no do this, this isn't yeah. for you. Yeah. So uh, I think that definitely helped. But. Yeah, good, awesome. You mentioned you had to gain weight to be in this, to be in this division? Yeah, I did, because the way it works with women's boxing, since it's our first time inside, they only let us have three weight classes. And it was 112, 132 and 165. And those other weight classes were so far out of my reach. So right. I moved up uh, six pounds, but I had to do with like I a lot. I was like way skinnier. Boy, I used to walk around like at 100 pounds. Wow. And now I walk around like at 117 pounds. Okay. So I had to gain like a lot of muscle to compete with the girls that were so much bigger than me. Right, right. You were, so you were a uh, high school student body president right. and you graduated in the top 2% of your class. How important is it for uh, hopefuls and athletes to feel supported by Americans? I, you know, I think that's really where it comes from. Once you get to a certain level and you work out so much excessively, you get drained mentally and physically. Sure. And I think it's the small things like support from you know your mutual family or support from your from your from where you're from or support from anybody really that kind of gets you motivated and gets you going so i think everybody at the end and you'll hear it a lot you don't really start thinking about your country until you get to the level that you're at sure. and i think that is probably the most important thing an athlete could have is to realize that they're doing it for for their for their entire country and it becomes something sentimental it becomes something important and I think uh, that's where a lot of athletes get their drive. Sure. I bet this is a question a lot of people ask. How do you do this every day? Because, I mean, you guys, it's, it's, it's strange for you to be here today because you're not training. Yeah. And it's so much, especially since we're 100 days out, how do you, do, how do you train every day? Whenever you're so used to it, I think what becomes more difficult isn't the physical part because your body's used to it right. and it's not anything out of the ordinary. I think what's hard for the majority of us is mentally. You get, you get pulled a hundred different ways and you, you have an, people expect a lot from you. And then of course it comes back to doing things for your country. And I think it's just about staying mentally strong and it's about the love for your sport. Everybody loves their sport and genuinely everybody will say, well, my sport's the best sport because they love it. And I think that's really, I, I really think that's why everybody is able to do what they do because they grow a unconditional love for, for their lifestyle. That's amazing. That's so well said. And I think that, you know, you, you, you gain support from your team, from your coaches, from your friends, from your family. And now this is a great way to gain support from the, the America. Yeah, no, this is awesome. This is awesome. I didn't expect it to be like this at all. That's <laughs> very cool. Well, Tell us about being part of the first group of women to box in the modern Olympic game. Well, having having the chance to be the group of, in the group of first women to ever compete in boxing for the Olympics, it's, it's really just a blessing. I mean, I have to take it one day at a time so I don't come, become overwhelmed because it's huge. But um, it's what I love to do. I, I love boxing for boxing. And I think that I'm just really blessed. And I thank God every day that I'm in the position that I'm in. And I hope that uh, I, I'm a good role model for whoever wants to follow in my footsteps. You're from Houston. There have been a lot of fighters from Houston. There have been previous Olympians, obviously male Olympians, Rocky Juarez. And Juan Diaz, I think, was an Olympian from Mexico and yeah. had a lot of success as pros. Have they influenced you at all? Um, I look up to them in the way that I know that they have done something that I want to do. But I think it's a whole different game for me, being female, uh, having the point system change. And um, I think I'm like on a different, I'm on a different boat. We're in the same water, but I'm in a different boat. And um, I, uh, I mean, they've done a lot of things, but I'm expecting to, to perform um, hopefully better than anybody who's performed before me.
What is it that got you into boxing since some people would say, well, you know, there aren't as many women in boxing as there are in other sports? Right. Uh, my dad. My dad got me into boxing. And then I luckily, thank God, uh, my first trainer, who's my trainer now, uh, who was a really, really good trainer, um, he paid attention to me when I was young, which was unknown. So that's kind of what gave me the advantage to be such a good athlete now. And my dad, when I uh, was young, he would watch boxing. He didn't watch football. He didn't watch soccer. He didn't watch basketball. We watched boxing. So that's what I thought everybody did. That's what I thought you're supposed to do. You're supposed to watch boxing. I thought everybody did it. And I was like, I want to try it. I want to try it. And it took about two, three years. But eventually he let me in. And uh, now I'm his only boxer. He wanted three boxers, but he only got one. <laughs> There weren't many women that you saw boxing on TV. I mean, HBO, for example, has never shown women's boxing. No. Even Layla Ali, they didn't show. No, I'm more of a Lucia Riker fan, but... Um, <laughs> they didn't show her eyes. No, they didn't. They should have. Um, no, you know, I think that I'm just lucky to be in the area where maybe that'll happen um, after the games. But no, when I was little, I didn't... I was so young, though. I was like 11. I was like... I was watching boxing since I can remember. I started boxing when I was 12, but I wanted to start when I was like nine. So when I was that young, I didn't realize how the world works and I didn't realize that I'm a girl and that's a guy's sport. I didn't see it like that. I saw it, that looks awesome, I love it. I watch it all the time and that's what I want to do. And um, I was a little naive, I was young. So, uh, but after I started, I loved it so much and I continue to love it and I think that's why I'm, I am, I'm here. What did you like about Lucia? She was a kickboxer before, went into boxing, and then has done acting after she retired. What in particular did you like about her? What I loved about Lucia Riker was first, she was one of the first females that I ever saw boxing that I actually respected how she looked. I was like, wow, I could actually, I want to look like that. I would used to watch men and be like, oh, I want to look like that. But her fundamentals were beautiful. She knew what to throw. She was quick. She had a she had a pretty style, and she was extremely focused. I mean, she didn't let anybody tell her no. She was a female boxer, and she knew it, and she owned it. And she was really strong mentally, really strong physically. And I saw her sparring guys. Like, um, I think that man, like, she was just the best thing I think for any female to look up to when it comes to boxing. Do you have any aspirations to go pro sometime after the Olympics? Is that question? No, professional is not is not for me. Professional is more like flashy, you know, let's press conferences and let's talk about how I'm going to beat you and, you know, let me wear a sports bra and a mini skirt and let, let's fight each other. But, um, you know, no, I, I love boxing for boxing and I, I love uh, amateur boxing because you know what you're there for. You Nobody talks. You don't even speak the same language half the time. You get in the ring. You know what you have to do. The best best person wins and you get out and you move on to the next one and, and that's what I love about it. Do you have a website or Twitter or Facebook people can find? Yeah, uh, my, my Twitter is Marlene112Boxing. So it's my name, my weight class and boxing. Good luck in London. We're looking forward to seeing how you do. <laughs> okay, thank you.